Hey y'all, how's it going? My name is Alex, this is History with Character. So recently I got into a discussion with a couple of my friends, um, Tiff over at Rattle the Star Studio and Catherine over at Crystal Pegasus. It'll be there somewhere, I think. And I was like, you know, I made this really cool corset, it's really nice, but it doesn't really give me the shape that I need. I'm gonna try this red threaded 1860s corset. And then Catherine was like, no way, check out the fabric that I got for my red threaded 1860s corset. And I was like, oh, wow, that's awesome, that's so pretty. And then Tiff was like, hey, I'm also working on the red threaded 1860s corset, so we went full Spider-Man and decided to release a collaboration because we're all building essentially the same pattern, but the three of us have very different body shapes. We're building different sizes. We are going at it from different perspectives. Catherine is making this gorgeous corset that can also be used as an overgarment. Um, mine is very functional, very plain, and Tiff's is very different size from both of ours. So we decided it would be kind of fun to work together and put together this collaboration. I'm really excited to see how theirs come out. I've seen some sneak peeks. It looks like there's going to be some really, really pretty corset making stuff on costume in the next little bit. So I hope you guys are ready and I look forward to you guys seeing the finished result. So to start out, I lined up all of my fabric pieces on the grain line of the cotil. This pattern was very interesting because certain pieces only had to be cut out once and I'm very used to cutting out on a double fold of fabric. I am using just a friction pin that I know I can get the heat to erase the ink later. I had to move my pieces around because I forgot that on the left front I needed to add a little bit of extra room to the seam allowance. This was figured out when I was doing my mock-ups. I just didn't have enough space left to cover all of the raw edges on the inside. I still think I should have gone a little bit further than I did, but this worked out okay. Then I cut out all of my double pieces. This was on a double fold of the cotille. It was very difficult to do because cotille is very thick. Even my best fabric shears, which could probably use a good sharpen, took a lot of effort to cut through. I got out my fabric of choice, which is this beautiful lilac mulberry silk. I realized pretty quickly that I was not going to be able to mark on this. The fabric was just way too shifty. So I tried a couple of different colors of chalk before eventually just pinning the pieces down to the fabric. After a good long while of struggling with this fabric because it wouldn't mark, it kept shifting, I realized that it just wasn't worth the effort that I was putting into it. So I put it back in my stash, went out to Joann's and got this beautiful poly satin that's a, like a peach neutral color. It's a crepe back satin from the Casa Collection and it works out very, very nicely. I've worked with this satin before. I knew how it worked, I knew how it felt, and it really helped out a lot.
I cut out all of my fabric following the layout guide that the pattern provided. I also cut around the pieces kind of big. This was because I knew from experience that this satin is kind of shifty and if I could cut it out big and then flatline it to the original pieces, I could then cut off the excess fabric to make the pieces the exact same size. Which is what I did. Here I am flatlining the bust scores to each other. Flatlining is just using a long stitch length and stitching two pieces of fabric together and then treating them as one piece for the rest of the construction process. You can see that around the edges of the cotille, which is cut to the pattern size, you can see the little peach crepe back satin. You may also notice that I am working with a new machine. This was a gift from my father for Christmas. So I figured what better way to test out a new machine than by making a corset with it. Once I had flatlined the pieces, I then just trimmed down the edges. After trimming down the edges of the flat line, I took the pattern back to the floor where I marked it using chalk paper and a dressmaker's wheel. First step of any corset, once you get all the preps steps done, is to put in the busk. I started with the hook side because of the instructions. I installed the zipper foot on my machine and stitched along, skipping over where I knew the hooks would be going. I had marked all of this out previously by laying the hook side of the busk down and using my friction pin to mark where I needed to stitch. I then pressed the facing piece open and then around. This makes the seam nice and flat so that I don't have to deal with a lot of bulk at center front. I probably overused the steam on my iron, but I love the way it ends up looking. Then I slid the busk between the facing and the front piece, sliding those hooks right in where they needed to go. Then I carefully took it back over to the machine using my zipper foot again and stitched as close to the busk as I possibly could. This machine is beautiful and does such an amazing job, but occasionally I have to work with the hand wheel to try to get the needle to go when it doesn't want to. It's just a little quirk of the machine that I'm still working out. Then I stitched on the peg side for where the built-in facing would fold over. This was the piece that I had to extend when I was originally cutting. Mm -hmm. 
I folded it over as per instructions and steamed it down. This was going to form a kind of a modesty flap and a facing to finish up the edges on the inner edge there. I stitched the facing down, once again, just according to the instructions. And then I marked where all of the pegs would go through. Because this is a polyester, it doesn't spread as easily as some other more natural fabrics might. But I did my best. I took my awl and poked it all the way through and then had to work with it and try to get the pegs to go through the fabric. It wasn't easy, it took some time, but eventually it got there. Once the peg side was in, I stitched it down once again using my zipper foot. The big issue that I had here was that I didn't install it quite in a straight line. Next up, I had to stay stitch the bust gores to prevent them from stretching as I was installing them. and then stitch around the slashes that would become the bus bore. Then I clipped into those slashes, being very careful not to catch any of the previously done stitches. I think I stitched this a little bit too narrow because it caused a few issues as I was trying to install the bus cores later, but it ended up working out. Then I very carefully ironed it in by just a little bit to give a finished edge on the outside of the garment. This is where I think I may have cut, stitched and cut them to be a little bit too narrow. Then I inserted the bust gores very carefully, pinning quite a bit. and I do not like to stitch over my pins if I don't have to. Once I had the bus scores installed, it was time to finally start installing the boning channels. The boning channels were installed only in the spots that would not cross over into the hip gore. Only a few of the boning channels were long enough to cross into the hip gore, so most of them were stitched down at this point. It 
if you decide you want to make this pattern yourself, you should probably read the directions for the boning channels a little bit closer than I did. There were a few errors that I made here. Then it was a matter of stitching the front and the back together. Then press it open and then flat to the back to help avoid bulk. Now, as we've gone through this, you may have seen a piece of twill tape flopping around. That is actually a waste tape, and at this point, you are supposed to install the waste tape. So, I sat down with my D&D group. We played our D&D campaign, and I did some hand stitching, being very careful not to go over into the fashion layer, just stitching into the cutiel support layer. Then I measured out the boning strips for the long pieces of boning. I cut mine to be just a little bit longer than they should be because I can easily trim it and make it the right length later. It's harder to add on extra boning channel material than it is to just cut it shorter. Stitch in those long channels. I am marking the lacing panel. This was marked to have two bones going alongside the row of eyelets that would give the corset its ability to be laced up. The lacing strip is one long rectangle that you fold in half and then stitch the boning channels into. I stitched along those lines that I marked. Then I needed to bind the edges. I am still terrible at making bias tape, so do not watch this for an instruction on how to do it. I'm still learning and I'm working on figuring out the exact angle that you need to use for bias tape. Besides, this bias tape ended up being too narrow. I cut out the bones for all of the individual pieces including the lacing strips. The lacing strips used uh, spring steel and the rest of the corset is spiral steel. I really should get some like actual tin snips instead of the wire cutters that I use, but it works. 
Then I used a couple pairs of needle nose pliers that I borrowed from my dad's toolbox to install the boning tips. This isn't hard, it's just a little more time consuming than I would appreciate. There's got to be an easier way to do it, but it works and I got to watch a lot of outside Xbox while I was working on it. Once the bones were cut and tipped, I then stitched all of the binding on by hand. The instructions for this pattern do actually say that you can install the binding completely by machine, and they explain how to do it. But with my machine being brand new and expensive, I didn't want to risk messing it up on the very first project that I used it for. I cut out all the spiral boning once the lacing strip was fully bound. I installed the boning tips again. Not difficult, just time consuming. Then I took everything outside to try to cut open the grommet holes. I bought this really awesome kit. I apologize for the shaking. And after a little bit of swearing and hitting things, I realized that this just was not going to work out the way I wanted it to. I tried cutting from both directions, you can see the imprint that it's made, but I just don't think that my die was quite thick enough to cut all the way through two layers of polyester satin and two layers of cutile. So I took it back inside and stabbed it instead. Then I got to take out all of my frustrations on this project outside with a hammer to install the grommets completely. This is one of my favorite parts of any sort of project like this. I love getting to hit stuff with a hammer. Then I installed the binding for the rest of the corset, first by machine to do the first half. And then finished it by hand on the opposite side. Then 
I stitched the lacing strip onto the back of the corset and did some top stitching. This pattern was the first time that I really did a lot of top stitching on a project, and I have to admit, I love the way it looks. It's a lot easier than I thought it was, and it gives just this gorgeous structured finish that I'm going to be using quite a bit more now that I know that I like it. And this machine is a little workhorse. It's going through so many layers for this. And it was just a matter of lacing it up. I joke a lot about having a master's in a social science and not being very good at math, but I really struggled with getting this laced up correctly for some reason. It just, for some reason, I could not fathom the skipping a hole every time, and it took way longer than it probably should have for me to finally finish lacing this corset up. So there we have it, uh, one completed 1860s corset. I'm thrilled with how this piece came out. It's not quite done. I need to go in and recut one of the bones because it doesn't quite fit into the diagonal back seam. And I would also like to actually floss it at some point, but I kind of, I, cross stitch is like my jam. I'm doing so many things with cross stitch lately. Check out my Insta if you haven't. And actual embroidery kind of freaks me out just just a tad so i'll get around to the flossing at some point honestly i'm probably going to make a video just about um finishing up projects because i still need to finish the haunted mansion bodice and put the lace on that and restitch a couple of those boning channels um but yeah working with tiff and Catherine was such an amazing experience. I'm so happy that we were all able to work together and I look forward to future collaborations. Without any further ado, I'll see you next time.